management of this injury pattern. And I'll go through our experience over the past 20 years with this injury. There's no conflict of interests. As mentioned previously, it's a distinct entity from adult. Um, it relates to the distinctive anatomy of the paediatric spine, which I'll go further in detail with. But due to the undeveloped uh, ligamentous structures and also musculature and disproportion between the head, head size and neck size, and notice earlier there's a high mortality associated with this dissociation. For classification, it's primarily into a three tier system, and this is in relation to the occiput in relation to the dens. And you can see the three types of the anterior feature to the left, and the posterior to the right, uh, bottom right, and also the distraction. We found from our series that the type 2. Uh, distra distraction was associated with the high survivorship. The actual mechanism has always been postulated as purely as a hyperflexion or hyperextension uh, mechanism. However, there must be a translation, hypertranslation with the, tr the head with respect to the trunk. So there has to be some distraction force involved. It cannot purely just be a hyperflexion, hyperextension injury. In terms of the diagnosis, uh, various radiographic indices have been described and, and used over the years in trying to attempt to describe the actual uh, occipital dissociation. Um, but the problem has been with the um, immaturity of the skeletal child, with the landmarks being difficult to actually discern on radiographs. Um, the three most common are powers ratios, BDI or BAI, and also the most recently, the C1-2 to C2-3 ratio, which is meant to have the high sensitivity. I'll go through in a little bit more detail what they are. So the powers ratio most people are, are familiar with. So you have the ratio between the Bezion to the midpoint of posterior arch and vice versa. And a ratio greater than one is significant for an anterior association. Uh, with the BDI, this was originally described as from the tip of the Bezion to the tip of the apex of the dens. However, with the delay in ossification with the dens, this has been got an arbitrary point and the standard parameters I mentioned is 12. Harris uh, looked into this and found that the BAI, which is the distance between a line from the posterior arch of the dens to the actual um, point of the uh, point of the um, intersection with the basion, was more reliable and this also conveniently happened to be um, a measure of 12 as well. As mentioned before, the high sensitivity has been determined with the ratio between the C1 and the C2, the C2 to 3, with a ratio greater than 2.5 equivalent to a lantocipital dissociation. Uh, in reference to the ligamentous structures, the most important um, from a diagnostic point of view is the tectorial membrane. Um, this is considered as complete uh, dissociation when this is ruptured. The other ligaments that are always mentioned are the paired alar ligaments, apical ligaments, which has dubious functional significance and also the transverse alar ligament. You can see on the um, bottom uh, side, you can see how you follow the back of the clivus and basion and you see the disruption of the actual tectoral membrane. And on the superior film, you can see how the tectoral membrane is intact. So the question remains, what confers stability at this junction or articulation? You bear in mind that the ligamentous structures are undeveloped and you have the physiology immature physiology and anatomy of the child to deal with, could you infer that these lig ligaments of structures are the sole support? But our feeling at the children's hospital is actually the congruency of the occipital condyles and lateral masses which are highly important and actually a pivotal factor in maintaining this stability at this articulation. So here we can see sagittal and coronal cross sections. You can see the congruency of C0, C1 articulation further re reiterated on the coronal view. The uh, most important thing is that the joint is congruent as providing there's no traction applied. So this is very important as a point to emphasise in the management and also um, treatment of this condition. Also of concern is the uh, management of, in terms of paediatric cervical spine injuries. Typically mo uh, most hospitals should have a, a paediatric spine board which allows for a cutout for the head or an elevated slip mattress. So we can see from the corresponding um, radiographs on the side. This is uh, taken at a local peripheral hospital and then transferred to Royal Children's Hospital which proceeded to confirm only one thing, that it was unstable by flexing the head forward and not adhering to using the special design boards. So it can happen at tertiary referral centres as well as 
and so education is pivotal in this, that people understand the um, anatomical differences between a child and an adult, and specific, specifically in managing the cervical spine injuries. So from a brief review of the literature, there's been several case series scattered throughout. The numbers are all in single figures, but they've managed to conservatively manage occipital cervical dissociation um, with good functional and clinical outcomes. And there's uh, four that have been referenced here. So the objectives from our research project was to report on our experience and define the frequency of this injury pattern and to assess radiological endpoints, particularly restoration of spike alignment and stability. With the methodology of ethics approval is obtained, it's a retrospective audit ordered over a 20 year period at Royal Children's Hospital. The key search terms utilised are listed above and there were several databases over this 20 year period which were uh, all incorporated to maximise the yield uh, from search for this injury pattern. In terms of the patients that were found, there was 10 in total. Uh, one was re referenced as an occipital cervical dissociation, but on further review of the MRI, there was only partial disruption of the pectoral membrane and as, that, as such was not included in the study. From the 10 patients, there were four mortalities. Uh, six were included and these were managed non-operatively. Interesting, all patients were male. Uh, the, mean, the range was from two, to, two years to 14 and the mechanism was pre predominantly MVA. There was one case of a mo motorbike accident. Uh, to go through one of the cases in point, this is one case from the series. Uh, this young boy was riding a bike. He's managed to get his head caught in between the fork of a tree and remained suspended there. He was extricated by his grandfather who then was transported to the Royal Children's Hospital and this was the damage sustained to the helmet. We can see that there's clear distraction on the left hand figure, the separation between the C0C1 and also C1C2 and you can see how there's disruption of the tectoral membrane and the increased space between the articulations. So with the joint reduced you see it go from uh, open spaces to congruent, you restored and also from in the radiograph. Um, notice that this is post-operatively or rather um, at a delayed uh, delayed point in time where you can see actually adherence of the pectoral membrane again and notably the patient was neurologically intact and avoided any occipital cervical instrumentation or fusion. So at the time of data review there was th um, the follow-up was variable unfortunately. Uh, three of the six cases identified occurred after the, uh, April 2010 so this is a question whether it's a true reflection of the actual time data period of 20 years, whether the cases were recorded from the earlier time period, weren't included in the database or missed because of coding areas. Um, however, this is the number of cohort we were left with. Two patients were aged over 18, 18 years of age at time of follow-up and thus could not be followed up um, within the parameters of a paediatric hospital. And three patients had missed their annual review. So in, at this stage, their average post-injury review was only four months. The radiological endpoints were defined as having uh, restored at normal alignment and unfortunately there's a typo there and dynamic views, flexion extension views were obtained in five of the six patients and this was deemed stable. The primary orthosis views are listed above, predominantly halothoracic vests and a combination of them later in the talk. The duration of the immobilisation consisted of 12 weeks for the halo and subsequent six weeks. This is fairly standard and with the Minerva was a total of 12 weeks of isolation, uh, immobilisation and this is concurrent with the general thoughts from the literature. An example of halothoracic brace and this is most appropriate in the older children. The most important thing is that you don't cause distraction at that articulation C0, C1 so this has to be used with, with caution. In terms of the, uh, the smaller child, uh, Papoose is uh, ideal for this situation and again the pivotal point is that not to uh, cause any distraction at this articulation and it quite clearly points that once the children's vertical you find the intrinsic stability actually serves to actually protect the joint. In summary, it's the single largest series of lateral occipital uh, dissociation in the literature, um, all been single series prior to this before. Um, successful outcome was obtained in all of the patients. 
in terms of the management of the suspected spinal injury, the point has to be laboured that there is crucial differences between adult counterparts and thus their management in terms of spinal boards and precautions and the, uh, the emphasis must be made on not to cause distraction at the articulation.